right, sick. I think we're ready to go. What's good, everybody? We're back. Been a minute. So I'm just waiting for a couple of uh, people to jump on. Um, welcome back, everybody. I know it's been a minute since I've been on. Um, today, we're going to be working with a pair of Air Force Ones. Um, really, really classic silhouette. The Air Force One Low. Man, I can't even find these shoes nowadays. It's crazy how you could have just walked into a Foot Locker like a year ago to pick these joints up. And now it's like impossible to find them anywhere, man. So um, real quick, man. Thank you guys for coming back, man. I really appreciate you guys for coming back. My homie Jeremy Loves in the building. What's good, Jay? Uh, Warrior Customs. What it do, homie? Uh, we got the homie Rojas Restorations. What's good? How's everything? How's everybody? How's everybody feeling? Uh, we got some folks jumping on YouTube. We're on YouTube today. We're on Facebook as well. And we're on Twitch as well. So um, <clears throat> welcome back, guys. So uh, let me uh, just give you guys a quick sec to, uh, you know, get on. I'm going to just start preparing these shoes as we get some more viewers to jump on. Um, I know that I haven't been on for a minute. So for those of you who are wondering, like, where the hell did I go? Um, I have a very, very large project that I've been working on over the last month and a half. Uh, 25 pairs of shoes and I've just been doing it single-handedly so you guys can understand uh, it's uh, it was a little bit of a time intensive process and because of that I haven't had the chance to stream but today Saturday it's a nice day uh, to get back into it so thank you guys for for jumping back in and uh, watching me man Jeremy Love saying feeling great painting some canvases while watching I love that Jay Warrior Customs, yeah, I just went to this store in Irvine, and they, damn, are you serious? 175, man, so you must have went to, um, Warrior, you must have went to a consignment store, I'm assuming, right? Because from what I've been seeing, people are reselling Air Force One <laughs> Lowe's for anywhere between like 150 to like even upwards to $300 when it was Christmas time in, in, the, in the holiday season, which I just think is absurd, but... I don't know it's, it's it's the land of making money in America, right? So we've got people who are trying to uh, capitalize on the shortage and and what's going on with the Air Force Ones. So um, I don't know how to feel about that, man. I feel kind of like you know, let these little kids get their Air Force Ones in high school, bro. Let let them let them chill and let them have some crispy white shoes. You know what they're gonna do with them is make them yellow in like five days, anyways. But let them enjoy their Air Force Ones. We've we, we got people already. Reselling Travis Scott's and Off Whites and this and that, and now we got Air Force Ones. Pretty soon we're just gonna have nothing in these stores. We're gonna have these bootleg. You guys are gonna be all walking around in some uh, Jumpmans, some some Jordan Jumpman brands. <laughs> Illustrious Souls, what's good, homie? Illustrious Souls says I'm painting and watching, man. Welcome, welcome back, homie. How you been? Got your six. Wade, what's good? How you doing, bro? You said I, I should have called you? You could have got Air Force Ones or what? The place is called Swoosh. It's funny you say that. There's another place called Swish Studios in uh, Cerritos Mall. And I think they're also a, a consignment store and they're reselling these guys. Um, and actually, what I've been hearing is they, they basically, in Cerritos Mall, if you guys are familiar with it, it's in L.A. or close to L.A., um, the Cerritos Mall has so many different um, shoe stores. So they've got House of Hoops. Uh, they did have Foot Action, but I believe they changed Foot Action out now to Champs. But they had Foot Action and Champs. Then they had uh, Finish Line, which is now JD. Um, they had Shoe Palace. They literally have every single shoe store that, you know, malls pretty much carry. And I've been hearing that... Um, they basically are like getting info whenever the Air Force Ones come in and they go and swoop up all the Air Force Ones and then put them up for consignment, which is nuts to me. <laughs> but that's that's what's going on nowadays, man. So uh, like you said, Wade, there goes the neighborhood, bro. <laughs> Jeremy Love, man, I, 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 I pray that you can get a, a, a pair of customs from me too, man. I know you've been uh, following for quite some time, man. And I do appreciate you becoming. Oh, thank you, Gotcha6. I appreciate it, man. I just saw your comment. It said, would have helped on, on your project any way I could. I do appreciate that, man. You know that. 
illustrious souls been good bro loving watching what do you mix with the alpha flex before painting the ratio oh man that's a great question bro let me uh let's uh let's jump into that first because uh we've got a lot of people who are now uh working with the alpha six corporation brand paint and uh, i did get a couple of people on my patreon channel saying that they had some minor issues with it and uh the minor issues were because that they didn't add this thing and i didn't know this myself but uh they sent it to me so let me show you guys what it is it's this guy right here it's called a, a flexible additive let me put that on the main screen there flexible additive so what i found out about the alpha 6 paint is if you really really wanted to stick well i would recommend picking one of these bad boys up this is kind of like using like too thin or adding uh glue almost to your paint all right so uh, if you haven't been using this uh, this is definitely something that you guys should look into it's also considered an extender what an extender is is you know if you have say four ounces of paint you can put this inside of the paint and now you'll have like five ounces of paint. It extends your, your paint, so you'll have more paint here. But uh, again, the directions say extender and mixing mediums for fabric and leather painting where flexibility is needed. So if you're new to the game, if you're just learning how to customize shoes, I've said this before, but I wanna make sure that you guys understand the emphasis. This toe box right here, when you step, you're stepping, you're always creasing that section. Think about Jordan 1s. Where do you see a crease line? It's always in this line right here. So this is the area that you're going to want to use this flexible additive when needed. Okay, so uh, make sure you guys pick this up. I left a link on um, the page here, but I'll, I'll put it up real quick one more time just to make sure you guys know where to get this from. Uh, that is Alpha 6 is the, the brand that has the flexible additive again. Sorry, this is... It's not working there. There you go. And I, I'm, I'm putting a code there. My code is just simply feel good. So if you get to Alpha 6 Corporation's website, you can use uh, feel good and you'll get a discount there. All right. Um, let's see here. Let me see what else we got here. We've got a couple of other people talking. I just want to make sure. Um, Illustrious Souls asked about the ratio. I would say the ratio because I haven't even figured out the ratio for this stuff yet myself. Um, but I would say that you know how when I've spoken to you guys about making sure your paint looks almost milky like in texture, meaning it's not like water where it's like super thin and it's not like yogurt where it's thick and gloppy. You want to have it somewhere in the consistency in between it where you guys uh, can see that it's kind of like milky. You know, when you pour a glass of milk, it's certainly a little bit thicker than pouring a cup of water. All right. So hopefully that helps you illustrious. I personally, don't have like a, oh, this is a four to one ratio. I just eyeball it. I've always been eyeballing it. Even when I use Angeles paint, I, I eyeball, you know, the, uh, the thinner, uh, the too thin, the too thin and the um, paint as well, just to make sure that it's flowing through the airbrush. That's the, my main thing. So if you're using an airbrush or if you're using uh, just regular paint hand painting, you just want to make sure that when you're laying the paint down, you can see and feel that it's going on smooth and not super thin. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out, uh, illustrious. If you have more questions, let me know. You know, uh, Warrior Customs, you said you know what, what that is the name of it. Uh, sorry, I might have missed the question there, so let me know uh, again if you what you're talking about there, and I'll answer that question for you. And uh, Jeremy, I, I, I'm thinking you say I appreciate you learning from the best. best um, and it was a, a mistype, so I appreciate that. Uh, how do you like that subscription box? I plan on doing, uh, I plan on uh, to do a custom challenge based on what I get from the box. Oh, that's kind of cool, Warrior. Um, I, honestly, uh, I, I really like the box. And let me see, where's this box at? I just pulled it up. They sent me this box. Um, man, they sent me the box in the beginning of January. But I've just been super busy, so I haven't had a chance to really deep dive and see what's inside of it. You know what I mean? But they got a lot of cool stuff in there. They give you a coupon in there. I haven't used these guys, but they're called scrubbers. So I'm interested in figuring out exactly how to use that. Uh, they sent some paint brushes here. They sent stickers. They send you a whole list of exactly what you received. So that was dope. And then they give you kind of an 
um, manufacturer suggested retail price on exactly how much this stuff is worth. Uh, I believe the box is like 49 bucks. Uh, don't quote me on it. Uh, microfiber towel. I did get two paints. Where did the paints go? I had the paints around. Oh, here you go. Sorry, I already put them up. <laughs> I was excited to see them. But these were the two paints that I got, and which was cool because um, what they're doing is they're introducing new colors. So these two were uh, Concord and Seafoam is what I ended up getting. Um, very Aqua 8, uh, Jordan Aqua 8 kind of a vibe with these two guys. So uh, definitely excited to use those two there. Uh, what else I get? Scuffers. These are dope because they're very similar to like um, sandpaper. So if you need to like sand little edges and stuff like that, this kind of gives you that thickness like where the sandpaper won't kind of see here's sandpaper here and like when you're pressing on sandpaper what does it do it falls in see that with these guys they're kind of thick so they kind of press back against the shoes got some snickers i got alpha acrylic markers and then i got this little little tupperware piece here i think that's maybe just to hold either if you're holding pain or whatever you need to use that for but the box is dope man i, I really like the box I thought it was a cool um, idea that Alpha 6 is coming up with. And every um, month, you're supposed to get a new box. So again, if you were going to subscribe for that, Jeremy, um, definitely use the, my, my discount because I think it'll be 49 minus 10% or 15%, something of that nature. Okay? Uh, but hopefully that answered your question on that. Um, Rojas Restorations, great question, man. He asked me... Uh, is Alpha Flex ready to spray out of an airbrush? Um, Alpha Flex actually has different lines. So let me show you what those uh, lines are. So the line that you're talking about, Alpha Flex, is this one here. And Alpha Flex is actually meant for hand painting. Uh, so if you have uh, paint brushes and you're more of a, a um, an artist that paints with brushes, you'd want to get Alpha Flex. They have a secondary line, and that's specifically for airbrush. And it's called Alpha Air. Okay. So this one here is thinner. You don't have to put any uh, anything in it to make it any thinner. And you can almost see it here on the top how thin it looks. Can you see how it's, it's almost like watery like? See that? But uh, either one of these guys, I, I definitely recommend adding this flexible additive. Whichever way you guys go. Because you want to make sure that your paint. I mean the last thing you want is for your paint to crack. Right? It's. It's really a bummer when the paint cracks on any shoe. Um, so you got to make sure that you prepare your kicks correctly, number one. You have to make sure that you're using the right amount of layers of paint on your shoes. And then that you're finally sealing them off with a scratch-resistant sealer or something to protect your artwork. All right. So usually for artwork that I want to seal things off, I'll use liquid kicks. Uh, man, this stuff is really great. It goes right through the airbrush. Uh, I use the matte finisher a lot. I use the factory finish a lot as well. They have like that nice, like this kind of a texture where it's kind of, you know, not shiny. And it looks just like it came from a shoe store. All right. So hopefully, I think we're good with the questions there. Oh, do I have more questions? Can't you use it on the whole shoe? Can't you use it on the whole shoe? Dang. Sorry, man. I just... Uh, I missed that. Can you use uh, the flexible additive you can use on the whole shoe? Exactly. I 100% recommend you use it in the whole uh, paint job that you do, not, not just using it on the toe box. So I think that's a question that you're asking, Jeremy, okay? Uh, Divine Graphics, what's good? Divine's over on YouTube. I don't think I've seen you on, uh, on the live before, Divine. So if you haven't been on, welcome. Uh, watching and gaining knowledge to get better each day. Thanks a lot, bro. Each one, teach one. I like that, man. I appreciate that. Uh, Divine, thank you for being on. And uh, definitely, you're going to learn something today. So let's talk a little bit about what I want to teach you guys today. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking questions on Air Force Ones because it's a very popular model. I'm going to be painting today Air Force Ones, if I can get to that point. But the, the first part of painting an Air Force One is knowing how to properly prepare the surface for painting, okay? Uh, a lot of people don't understand that that is probably the number one reason why your paint job cracked, is that you didn't prepare your shoe correctly, all right? So uh, with that said, I've got two different options here. I've got an Alpha Flex stripper or deglazer, 
or you can use good old fashioned, and I put this in inside of one of these squeeze bottles, but this is acetone, okay? The difference between the two, acetone is super, super strong. So this will definitely strip off, if you guys don't know, there's a clear coat on these guys. It'll strip that clear coat off, and then from there you can go ahead and paint on the shoes. If you do not do this step, if you say, you know what, I don't need to strip it, I don't need to use an acetone to deglaze nothing, I'm just going to start painting. This, this is like having a shield on top of your Air Force One and you're trying to paint on top of it. It's not going to stick. All right. So number one, you have to, have to, have to prepare these correctly. All right. So with that said, let me show you guys what parts I'm going to be painting today. I'll be painting the toe box. I'll be painting the sides. I'll be taping off this back Nike tab. I'll be taping off this little slit right here. I'll be taping off all of the sock liner and I'll be taping off this top end portion here as well. All right. So just for you guys to have an idea of where we're going to be working with um, a couple of things that I want you guys to know today, uh, by the way, uh, I'm actually doing this uh, tutorial for you guys because we have a new Patreon member. Her name is Ruia and uh, her son's name is Amir. So welcome to you guys. Uh, specifically for you guys, I'm trying to help you guys out today, and I think a lot of you guys will be benefiting from what we're going to do anyway. So um, one of the things that she had questions on is, how do you get your sock liner so crispy? So I'm going to show you guys taping techniques today on how to tape these bad boys up. What tapes you guys need to use, because believe it or not, there is specific tapes for different portions that I use on this Air Force One. They don't all work the same. For example, if I use blue tape on here rather than uh, masking tape, it's not going to stick the same. Okay. If I use blue tape on the sole versus using this sole tape that I'll be using today, it's not going to stick the same. All right. So let's let's jump into it, man. I know I've been uh, I've been babbling a lot. <laughs> so, so let's jump into it. I already got the the laces taken off. Let me uh, grab some uh, acetone. Oh, no, I got the acetone. Uh, let me grab some cotton balls. So I got some cotton balls here. So grab some cotton balls here. And again, I just want to deglaze the portions that I'm going to be working on. So for example, like this top portion here, I'm not painting it. So there's no reason for me to start deglazing that, all right? So uh, it doesn't matter which one I use. I can use acetone. I can use a stripper or deglazer. I'll, I'll jump into using this guy here. And uh, real quick, I, I didn't know this. You got to pull this bad boy up first. And once you pull it up, it's a lot easier to work with. You don't even need to pour it into a cup or anything. If you have older shoes, if you're restoring older shoes, I highly recommend doing uh, the stripper deglazer over the acetone because Sometimes when you have an older shoe, the material is kind of deteriorating already, right? Like say, say for example, it's from like 2010 and we're in 2022. You, you got 12 years of this leather going through all kinds of, you know, processes of being used, being worn, uh, being, you know, just the natural leather eventually deteriorating. So you don't want to use something that's super strong. You want to use something that will still take the initial clear coat off, but you don't want to like get into it because I've done this before. I've, I've used acetone on shoes that are older and then I see that the acetone is actually breaking down the leather to the point where like it's not even paintable anymore. I can see cracks in it. So if you're ever wondering like which one should I go with? Should I go with the stripper and deglazer or should I go with acetone? If you even have a doubt in your mind, go with the softer version, which is the stripper and deglazer. It's almost like a watered down version of acetone, okay? Um, I know I just kind of put this to the side, but this here, I don't know if y'all could see it, but it is actually taking off clear coat. I can see some kind of a solution, some kind of a pigment has been taken off of this. Let's see here. Y'all notice that when I put the, the, the acetone or the deglazer on here, I'm not putting a bunch of acetone on here. I'm not putting a bunch of deglazer on here. It's not like 
running down the shoe. It's literally just enough where I can see it in the light. I can actually see that it's shiny. I can see where it's getting wet. And so then I have an idea like, okay, cool. It's, it's, there's enough acetone or there's enough deglazer on this guy where I can see it's doing its work, okay? So what I like to do, I call this the triangle method, which is <laughs> totally made up, but I like to hold it in one section here. Once this section looks kind of dirty, then I switch over to the next side, see that? And then I'll do the same thing one more time, just like a triangle. I have three different spots here where I can get a brand new cotton ball and so you're not like wish washing around all the clear coat. You don't want to get all this clear coat off on this side and then dip it in deglazer again and just move all of the stuff you just moved to the other side, okay? That's not really doing anything. You're not cleaning the surface. A side note, guys, when these guys are making the shoes, there's hands, handprints, oil, all kinds of different things that are done to the shoes before they are actually handed over to you. So that's another reason why we need to make sure we prepare and clean everything really nice. Especially the toe box, y'all. Remember the crease points I said. There's a crease point here. There's a crease point here. What's nice about doing a tutorial like this is you guys can see in real time how long it takes for us to actually prepare a shoe. And you'll see that I still will go through and sift through, make sure we got all of the spots. Just to double take, you know what I mean? Just to make sure this is not my fault. If it starts to crack, I've done whatever I could to make sure that I've precautioned myself before I painted. Alright, that looks that looks and it feels real good. All right, so I'm I'm about two cotton balls in. I'm gonna just do one more just for just to do it. <laughs> oh, there we go, illustrious. I just saw your comment, man. Yeah, you know, it's a, a lot of people do not know that these guys have two different versions of paint, so. It's it's a good thing that you're on, man. Now, now you know, illustrious, that you've been working with that airbrush. And it, you know, I'll tell you one thing: if you try to put that airbrush paint into a little um, painter's cup and you, you try to paint it hand paint it, you're going to notice that it's very like watery, and it's going to be difficult to fill in, you know, panels and stuff like that. So that's why I, I definitely recommend the Alpha Flex. But uh, again, I, I recommend it with the flexible additive as well. All right. All right, so I think we're good there. I mean, I can't I can't stress to you guys again enough of how important this this process is here. You know what I mean? All right, so we're good. So three cotton balls in. I'm gonna toss these guys. There's no point in having them. Cool. And I'll I'll put this guy to the side because otherwise, if I try to prepare both of them and tape them off, it's it's pretty redundant. I'll put the cotton balls here to the side, and let's cap this guy here. And let's jump on to the next step, okay? Mr. Rainian, welcome back to class. <laughs> What's good, Alan? How you doing, buddy? All right, guys. So I've got some tape here. This is, again, from Alpha 6 Corporation. I've never used this tape before. This is the first time that I started using this tape on the project that I've been working on. And I'll tell you guys... Um, I've used a lot of different tapes because when I first started, there was just like a plethora of different people throwing out, this is the best tape and that's the best tape and you need to get the green tape and you know, this tape is amazing. It comes, for, for some reason, they're making them in some different colors. Uh, the last one I had was in, in green, but Soul Tape is the tape that I like to use on the soles. That's why it's called Soul Tape, okay? And I'll show you guys why I like to use this on the soles because for whatever reason, I don't know what proprietary, you know, ingredients they did to make this stuff, but it 
wraps around the whole shoe very seamlessly. But the more important part for me is that it doesn't leave any residue or adhesive. Even after like a couple of weeks of having this on, I peeled all of this off and I didn't have to worry about cleaning stuff up. And I was like, wow, that's that in itself made me uh, a believer in this tape. So we're going to use this tape today first. Um, let me tell you guys, there is an order that I like to to, to do this uh, taping and masking off, okay? And, and I'll explain to you guys exactly why I like to do it in this order, all right? First off, I like to work on the hardest surfaces first. And the reason why I like to work on the hardest surface first is because let's say, for example, I started off with the sock liner, which is, right, it's soft, it's... It's malleable, it moves a lot, right? So let's say I get this to be like perfect. Then I start working on like, let's say for example, the toe box or let's say I work on the, the sole. Then I'm like moving this thing all around. As I'm pressing down onto the shoe, the tape starts to unfold and unravel, all right? So the last one that I'm gonna work on is actually going to be the sock liner, all right? First step, I'll be today working on doing the sole. Then the second step, I'm going to be working on masking this whole second section off here. And then the last step, I'll be doing the sock liner. And at the same time, I'll probably do the back heel. Okay? So uh, let's jump into that next. Uh, Warrior Custom said it is 45 bucks for the monthly subscription box for Alpha 6. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Mr. Allen uh, just joined us. What's good, Mr. Patreon family? How you been? You you kept your word and you and you and you said you're gonna come join us. I appreciate that. Is Alpha Air good to use on Jordan Four Cement Mesh Tongue? Um, you know what? That's a good question, dude. Rojas, that's a great question. I would say that um, I would. The mesh tongue on the inside has that like soft feel, but then on top of it has the plastic. Um, do I have a? I got a four right here. This is one I'm working on here. Okay, so this is not exactly a um, a stock four, obviously, but you guys can see that on the inside. Usually, that mesh is like super soft, and it would be like the perfect candidate for Alpha Air because. Alpha Air seeps into like fabrics really well. But then you get on the top of it and the top of it is like more of a harder netting. So that that part I would recommend. Maybe you want to do like an Alpha Air in the beginning just to get in the crevices and get on the inside mesh portion. But then on top of that you might want to do like a, um, a, a combination of too hard and, and, and Alpha Flex, you know, or something that's a little bit more rigid because of the fact that this is, you know, not not exactly like a mesh, okay? Um, but great question, Rojas. I would have to, I'd have to get back on you, uh, get back, to, ooh, what did I drop? I'd have to get back to you on that, bro, um, because I haven't worked on a mesh tongue for that yet, you know what I mean? Where your customer said, sometimes it feels like forever. I hate the prep process, man. The prep process sucks, but, it, you know, if you don't do it, right then it, it you know it really messes up the whole custom at the end of the day you know what i mean so jeremy asks what's my favorite shoe to customize i mean i'd have to say the jordan one right now it's just a classic shoe man it really is all right y'all let me see if uh hopefully i don't have any more questions that i missed okay i think we're good so let's let's jump into uh actually taping off the sole and stuff so this is why I like it. You guys could see it's kind of like a vinyl style tape. See that? And if you guys don't mind, I'm going to stand up for this just because I want to get a better angle. And what I'll do is, uh, you know what? I think I have actually one of these joints right here. So I might need it. Here we go. Just so it has a little bit better of an angle for you guys. All right. So uh, it doesn't really matter where I start. But what I do like to do is when I put this guy down, put it down like that, right? And it's really important here to try to establish 
the uh, lock right exactly where this line is. See this line? Because wherever I airbrush after the line is done, it's that's where the line is going to actually end up looking to be. So, um, th you know, if you don't have fingernails, having longer fingernails here is, helps a lot because look at what I do here. You see when I actually find the like the spot I want to lock it, I will press it down like this with my fingernail and make sure that I lock in exactly where I need it to lock in like this. All right. The main point I want you guys to understand here though is that when I'm locking it in with my fingernail, this line is exactly where when I peel the tape off, the colors are going to show. So if you have this like wobbly or wavy or if you have it on the upper, you're going to miss that part of painting your shoe. So I, I want you guys to understand the importance of masking this off correctly. All right, so now I'm going to just go through. And as I go through, I'm just looking to make sure that I'm exactly on that line. All right, see? Pressing down. So this part is now all locked. We're good. Press it down. And I'm just going to continue to go through the whole shoe just that same way. This part looks good. Lock it in. See, once it's locked in, you can just continue. So now we're going to go around the toe box here. And I might have to move this for the toe box so y'all could see. So I pull it out again. See? That looks and feels good. Lock it in. See, I missed this part here. I can see a little little bit of the sole. Now I can either take this whole thing off or I can just fix that piece later. So I will opt to fix that piece later when I'm not in a rush, probably when I'm not live. <laughs> I just take my time and do this. And when you take your time to really achieve a nice clean line, I'll tell you right now, you're going to have a lot less hassle you won't have to worry about fixing things because it's perfect when you first start it. So strongly recommend getting your tape game to be A1. See that? It's conforming perfectly with it. No having to heat it, nothing. So again, now this part here has a little bit of a curve. So with that in mind, I'll just take my time to see I'm using my fingernail. And the main thing I'm trying to remember is I don't care about all the back end of this stuff. That's just covering the, the sole. I only care about getting this line to be straight. People who work at body shops, who do cars, this is, they, they have a specific person usually, and they're the tape person. They're the ones who, before the painter comes to paint the shoe, they're the guy who's responsible for making sure everything is masked off and taped evenly. So that's that's what we're doing here. We are trying to get our tape game to be like that. And this, you know, you can you can cut little pieces too, guys. You don't have to do it in one long strip here. I just do it like this because I like it. <laughs> it's fun. See? Lock in. Lock in. Always try to lock in as soon as you feel like that line is straight, you lock it in. Now notice here when I come around the curves, I'm not really doing a lot of work. I'm just looking for where the line should lock in. See that? Just looking for, bam, that looks good. Lock it in. Coming around the curve. trying my best to get right at that line because I love peeling it off and seeing a nice crispy line when it's all done. And just like that we're done. Cool. So let me cut this guy. Bam. Okay. And this part here I'm going to just redo it because I'm not, I, I wasn't really paying attention to make sure it was straight, you know. This part here is where I recommend if you guys could have your fingernails a little long, it, it, it's a lot better than having them super short. Okay. All right. So I got now the line established. 
And what I like to do, you don't have to do it, but what I like to do is go all the way around and make sure the whole line is locked in. Okay? And before I start painting, I will do a double check. There's usually dips right here. So I, I try to indent that in, indent that in, just to make sure that everything feels and looks clean. All right? Now, I told you guys that I feel like I missed a, a small spot here and there. So what I'll do now is grab a little piece of tape. These are just for, you know, minor fixes, nothing crazy. And I'll go in. Where is that spot that I, it's a real small spot. It's right here. So I'll just go back in and I'll try to fix that little piece. Sometimes the sole isn't perfect when they make them either, you know? So we're, we're working with Nike QC here. Quality control. There we go. Cool. Got a little piece left here, and I think I got a piece in the back. So there we go. Again, as I put this down, I want to make sure that it's still nice and seamless, right? It looks smooth. It's not jagged. Did I miss a spot here? Um, not really, dude. I think I'm good there. Yeah, I think I'm straight. Okay, cool. So we're good to go. All right, guys. Sorry about that. I know that took a minute, um, but you guys can see that once you get it established, this thing ain't moving. <laughs> Raining, I just saw your comment, man. It's it's all, you know, just like we talked about marbleizing and learning how to uh, be better at your craft. This is just another part of becoming better at your craft, man. You know, you can do it. It just takes time. Right? Oh, there you go. You said, thank God I've gotten a lot better. Oh, that's a smart idea too, Jeremy. Jeremy said I use an old credit card to lock it in. I like that idea, man. What's up, Doc? <laughs> Brandon Looney Tunes fan. I could definitely tell you're a Looney Tunes fan when you start off by saying, what's up, Doc? <laughs> Welcome, bro. All right, guys. So uh, we've got this tape locked in. Obviously, now we've got extra, you know, sole showing. So what I like to use on this portion here is the blue Scotch 3M tape. So let me show you guys what the, uh, it's right there, Scotch Blue number 2090. This is made by 3M. You guys can get this at Home Depot. This is a 1.88, 1, 1. okay? I have 285 subs now, nice man. Congratulations, yo. Peter, welcome. Or a toothpick, toothpick's a good idea too. I like that idea as well. You guys have some good uh, suggestions, man. Thank you guys for uh, participating and letting us know. This is why I like uh, you guys, man, because you guys are never shy to give us a uh, different valuable ways to do this you feel me so um real quick this tape by the way there i i believe are they're they're making it in like a two i want to say a two inch tape now too so you might not have to do this second process that i'm doing and the reason i'm using the blue tape just for people to know i'm obviously i want to cover the sole i don't want paint to get on the sole so what i'll do is i'll use the blue tape here and i use the blue tape over just standard masking tape because it has enough adhesion to lock in but it doesn't like lock into the point where like it leaves residue so that's why I like to to just use this for this bottom portion here again if you are looking to get the sole tape I believe alpha 6 now has this in a 2 inch so you might be able to skip this step but what I'll do then is just kind of see I'll lock in just at least the bottom portion of it here if I want to make sure it's crispy, crispy white on the bottom, you can even put a la layer or two there. Hextarix, thank you for subscribing, homie. And I think I missed somebody earlier for subscribing, so I'm sorry that I missed y'all uh, if I did. Uh, thank you again for subscribing, yo. So we got a little portion in the back there. Definitely don't want to miss any of this stuff. So we'll just go ahead and add this little section here in the back. See that? Done. So now we can kind of press and lock in the bottom of this like this. Um, for me, I usually don't cover the bottom just because I'm 
careful with it, but you know what? Let's let's do it correctly. You can just grab another couple of pieces of tape and easily cover that. Actually, you know what? Another suggestion here, I got used pieces of tape. As long as it has enough adhesion, that'll work too. See? I always save my tape from other projects if it still has enough adhesion. So that way you could save a little bit of money. And who doesn't want to save money, right? There we go. You know, again, this doesn't need to be perfect. It just, you know, it'll cover from overspray if you're using an airbrush. If you're hand painting, you probably don't even need to do this process. I mean, you gotta be real clumsy, <laughs> clumsy to get it on there if you're hand painting. All right, so check it out. We got the bottom now all covered up. Again, you wanna really like have like good lighting because when you have good lighting, you can see any portion here that like you overlapped on that you shouldn't have and you can fix it, all right? So now that I see that the whole bottom looks good, again, pressing down on these little spots here and here just to make sure that they indent correctly, we can move on to the next process, okay? Any questions about this, guys, let me know. Um, I'm, I'm here to help you guys out, you know? Your favorite Looney Tunes character, guys. <laughs> the more we share, the more we grow. That's very true, man. Embossed tools are a great tool, too. Uh, jo Jovert, could you uh, elaborate on that, bro? Uh, he said embossed tools are a great tool, too. I would love to hear like what you mean by that. Is that for taping, you mean? Uh, if it is, let me know how we can use an embossed tool um, to make this a, a, an easier process. Uh, I got HDOKB. M -S I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. I don't know if that's a, a name that I'm not supposed to be able to pronounce or not, but he put Vum Nigo. Not <laughs> I don't know if that's in a different language or if you're all just messing with me, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jeremy, I, I agree with you, man. He said, I, just, I suggest taping the bottom if airbrushing. It's true. Trekking said there's more to life than Looney Tunes. I, I think... I think uh, Brandon begs to differ on that, bro. <laughs> uh, I use printer paper and tape on the soles. Oh, that's smart too. I like that. So, Jeremy, are you just putting like a piece of paper there and then you're just taping the edges so you don't have to use a lot of tape? Nathan, this is my first time watching your page. So nice to meet you and thanks for having me. Hey, thank you so much for, for joining us, man. Hopefully, you can learn something new today. We're, we're learning how to to paint some AF1s, you know what I mean? So, oh, Javert said, yes, for taping, for locking it in because of the rounded tips of the two. Oh, gotcha. So are you saying that you'd use it like right here in this corner and you just kind of lock it in like that with the embossing tool? It's almost like a, like a flat tip um, screwdriver, huh? That's, a, that's another, man, you guys are very creative with the way you guys uh, customize your shoes. All right, guys, next step. So I've got to mask this top portion off here. Um, what I do know is uh, for this next step, I want to warn you guys. This tape here is just standard masking tape. You can see it's Scotch 2020 contractor grade tape. That means it's super sticky. Uh, it is also made by 3M. You can also get this at Home Depot. Uh, you can get it at Amazon, I'm sure, as well. 1.88 inches is what this is. Um, what I want to warn you guys about this tape, though, is that if you guys have this tape on for too long on this guy, it's going to end up leaving the, the, the glue residue that is behind the tape, especially if you're in like warm weather and then you go to cold weather and then warm weather. If you're in those kind of conditions, you want to use this tape, you want to do your paint job, and then you want to just take it off as soon as possible, okay? So this guy here, this is my this is my key. This is my this is clutch for doing your sock liner. Okay, I know that uh, Ruia said that her son Amir he was doing like a cartoon custom, and you know with the cartoon customs you're usually outlining all the edges in black. Well, he ended up um, outlining this edge in black, and guess what happened? The mesh sock liner it's like a sponge. If it feels a little bit of paint, it'll start to suck it in. All right. And so when we're going to be doing this sock liner, I'll show you guys a couple of different tricks that I have for it. Right now, though, 
let's jump on to just uh, taping off this top portion. What's important to me is I'm ne trying to protect everything on the inside here, okay? So what I will do is I will grab like a paper towel. Um, the paper towels that I have, for some reason, they, they're kind of cool because they're supposed to be like this big, but they're in halves. So I'll take a, a paper towel first, and the first thing I will do is protect the inside of the shoe. You wanna cover the inside of this shoe, okay? So you see how I get it to this point here, and I'll make sure that the whole tongue sock liner on the inside here is somewhat covered, all right? It's not gonna be perfect, but it'll, it'll be well covered, I'll tell you that, okay? So you see how I got into this point here? All right, next we're going to be taking some of this contractor's grade tape and we're gonna start masking things off, all right? Now there's two different ways to do it, all right? If you're a beginner and you're like, yo, there's a lot of curves to this, because there is a lot of curves to it, if you see. If you're checking this little section here, there's a bunch of different curves. So you might have to take small little pieces of tape and as you're putting them down, you're trying to align them to be as close to the edge as possible, but leaving just a little bit of give. So then that way you can use your fingernail and get that little edge, the raw edge. Y'all see that? There's a raw edge right here and you wanna to try to cover that as well, all right? Because I'm trying to keep this panel white, I don't wanna have like a colored edge there unless you really want that as a, you know, if that's your theme, that's your theme. That's just what you wanted to do, all right? So as you go through, you're gonna be doing like little pieces like this and then you'll use your fingernail to try to create that line and block off, all right? And the thing about this is you gotta be pretty accurate with it. So as I put it down, I'm gonna use my fingernail here and get that little excess section and lock it in. All right, so this can be a little tedious. I, you know, I'm just being honest with y'all. This can be tedious on the Air Force One because you wanna to try to get it to be nice and clean. If you don't, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a bunch of edges that look like all, all warped and messed up, you know what I mean? And then you're gonna to have to go back in and clean all those edges. So I, I don't like to do that. I like to just get the edges locked in correctly. So y'all could see that when I'm using my fingernail, I'm kind of, I'm ducking it underneath the panel. So I'm getting it to the edge and then I'm trying to duck it underneath the panel. So then that way, when we're painting this panel, we'll have a nice crispy line. We won't be missing any pieces or chunks or anything. We'll, we'll, we'll have it all nice and clean. All right, so let me just go ahead and just finish this little section off and I'll show you the other way to do it. It's a little bit more, you gotta be really good with the razor blade. Let's just put it that way. All right, because if you're not good with the razor blade, if you feel like unconfident in cutting and stuff like that, then I would recommend you just go this route. I mean, it's a pretty standard way to cover this little thing. I haven't found any like real shortcuts to it but what I do know is that it, it works. <laughs> so uh, anything that works and uh, it's effective, I'll continue to use it. All right, so now that you can see here, again, let me just show you what I'm talking about with the edge. You'll see this edge? There's a little edge there. So I'm trying to get just enough masking tape to get on that edge and get as like nice of a clean line as possible when we're doing this. All right, and before I paint, I like to do this one more time, meaning that I'll use my fingernail to really make sure that the the masking tape is locked in. All right, so I got that edge pretty much done. I know that when I do this, though, sometimes I'll miss, you know, here and there, I'll, I'll miss a line or two. So I'll go back in with a smaller piece of tape and I'll try to create that nice crispy line. I don't want to make any mistakes here if I can. Now if you're hand painting, this isn't as uh, important, but today since I'm airbrushing, that is important to me. All 
All right, and you know, one one other thing I want to just kind of note: as good as I as I am with taping off and stuff, there's always corrections to my customs after I'm done, always. So it's never like I just rip this off and I'm like, hey, I'm done with the custom. It's I rip it off and now I have to start to inspect my work. All right, so if you're not getting a perfect line here, you're not supposed to most of the time. I mean, if you're that good of a taper, uh, let me know if you want to work because <laughs> I might need to hire you. I hate doing this stuff. I hate taping and stuff, but, you know, again, it's part of the process. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. You know, so that's a good thing. All right, that looks good to me. I think I've gotten a pretty fairly clean line there. I just want to show you guys that raw edge before we go on. Peter, <laughs> that's funny you just said that. So Peter uh, Cholminski, welcome over, man. Uh, Peter's over on YouTube. He he said the problem I have sometimes is that the toe box cracks when it creases. I don't know. Did you did you start watching from the beginning this live stream or not? Because that's one of the first things that we started to talk about when we were talking about the uh, paint cracking and preparation and stuff. So if you haven't, um, I would recommend you just whenever you have a chance. Um, this is going to be re replayable on YouTube, so you can just watch what we kind of mentioned there. Okay. Now, uh, Jeremy, I think you're kind of on, on pace on what I'm going to be do doing on this next section here, okay? So we got this side done. I'm going to do now this section here, okay? But let me show you guys a different way on doing that. Let me, where is that? Um, here we go. I got, I'm trying to grab uh, something that's a little clean. They're white, you know? So like whenever they're white, I'm really careful with these guys. So let's do the same thing that we're going to tape off this edge now watch what i do this time around this time around instead of being exactly on the edge i'm going to lay down the piece of tape and i'm not going to lay it down like really hard i'm just going to lay it down very carefully and soft just where the eye holes are see that make sure you guys get a view of that okay so now i just laid that guy down and as i lay him down my main concern again is the edge okay so now what i'll do is again i'll grab my my trusty fingernail and now i'll start to press down and locate where the line is so that's important because you can see through this tape and as you could see through the tape you start making your creased line all the way through all the way through until you're positive that you can see exactly where that line is okay now you guys see why i said when you lay this tape down you don't want to just lay it down aggressively you just want to lay it here on the top lightly because what we're going to do next is we're going to be using a razor blade to cut out the excess tape all right so let me jump into this section here that looks pretty good. I've got a razor blade here. Uh, usually I do recommend using a nice, clean, sharp razor blade Okay, on this. And again, if you're not comfortable doing this process, do the first way that I just showed you guys, yo. All right? This razor blade is sharp. It cuts leather really, really easily. So with that in mind, do you guys see the line? I just want to make sure you guys can see the line that I'm going to be cutting here. All right? The line should be pretty pretty obvious because you could see the shadow of it see that shadow right there this is going going to be the line I'm gonna cut all right now I'm not gonna cut it with a lot of force what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try to cut it where it almost cuts underneath this panel okay at a 45 degree angle so I'm not cutting like this I'm not cutting straight down I'm cutting at a 45 degree angle all right so let's go ahead and cut that and as I do it I want to try to get exactly where the line is that we we created here okay because that's going to be the line that we want when we're painting all right so let's see how that looks so i'll peel this little guy up see how sharp that is 
and that's what it should look like. Honestly, guys, between the two, I think if you can master doing this, this is the much cleaner and more efficient version of taping off. You just have to be really careful when you do it though. Like you don't have to press hard. When you have a sharp razor blade here, you don't have to press hard. You could just, you're almost like letting it glide and do its own thing. If I can't see it, that means I gotta press down a little bit to make sure I'm cutting in the right spot. Okay. Now here's the sock liner here. It's the same thing. I just wanna be real careful with where am I cutting it here? All right, so let's see how this end result looks like. Hopefully this will help you guys out for those of you that have never done this process before. There we go, cool. So now y'all could see this edge should have a nice clean and completed look. What I like to do after it's done, I like to, with my fingernail, I'll press it back in one more time because sometimes as you're removing that excess, it'll pull this side of the tape a little bit. So, you guys see that? You guys good with that? So, so far so good. We've gotten the majority of this portion done. What I'll do next is just tape off the toe box here. Um, to be quite honest with you guys, I'm gonna be painting it black. So um, one thing that I want you guys to understand is if you're painting something black, you should paint black usually at the end because if you're painting things really, really bright and then you paint black next to it, you're gonna have to do cleaning up quite a bit if you, if you mess up on the black portion. So I always reserve black for the end. Um, you know what, I'll just use the, the blue tape here. And I'm not even going to need to make it perfect because what I'm really trying to do here is just cover up the holes here on the toe box. I don't want like highlighter yellow or orange or any colors to be in there. So I'm just going to cover those guys up. And I don't need to do like the whole process of, you know, painting, um, getting this toe box to be perfect. If you want to, you're, you know, you're perfectly fine to do that um, but like I said once I paint this guy black you're not gonna see any overspray or anything on this anyways so what I'll do is I'll just cover things up real quickly so we can move on but it is smart for you guys to know I mean if you needed a shortcut this is one way you can save time this doesn't need to be perfect if I'm gonna paint it black all right how's that look so we got the good majority of it done just because I got a little piece here, I'll just put it down. Okay, now I gotta make sure, because I'm painting this front end here, that none of this blue tape is hitting. That's good enough, cool. So now, I've gotten the majority of that paint uh, masked off. I will, just for safety, drop one more piece of this sticky masking tape on here so we don't have some kind of paint creeping in, all right? Last thing I want to do is see some paint creep. So, top portion is done. I noticed that, um, you know, there's an opening here. See this? There's an opening there. So we've, we've got to put a piece of tape here. I'll show you guys. I'll do that at the end. Again, I won't do that now. Next thing I'm going to prepare for here is we're going to set up the back because the back, I'm not going to be painting this little white tab or this little uh, insert here, okay? So same thing, I'm gonna grab the masking tape here. And as I grab the masking tape, I've shown you guys two different ways on how to place the masking tape down. I'm going to do this the second way that I taught you guys, which is just laying this down very carefully and then depressing and finding the edges. Again, you'll come to see that if you get good at this, you can save a lot of time. 
Just got to be careful when you cut. If you have good light, it helps out a lot because then you can really see exactly where you need to cut. All right, so we got that side done. We're gonna do the same thing, see? This part here, I could see the tape pulled up. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that tape back down with my fingernail. Make sure it looks right. I see a raw edge here, so I'll cover that up too. Happens, no biggie. Just take a little tape and just cover it up. There we go. Looks good. All right, so we got the majority of this taped off. We tape off this little insert, but we got this side here. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Go ahead and just place it down real carefully. Find the line. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna get, take the razor blade. And I'll be peeling off uh, excess parts. Excess parts peeled off, dope. Again, using my finger just to secure everything there, right? We're good to go. Cool, I just got this little slit here and I think we can start painting. Even my airbrush said I'm ready. All right, before I paint, uh, before I do that, top portion let's just get that little this little slit done what I like to do with that is just, just grab a little piece like this split it in half and usually if I get this right let's see if I get it right you could just place it down again this is like the first way I, t I showed you guys get right in that crevice there we go, it looks good. And now we'll do the same thing on this side here, okay? <laughs> it's a tape master. I, I mean, I don't know about tape master, man. I always got room, room to improve as well, man. But I appreciate the, the compliment. Same thing on this side, okay? I'm gonna just place it down with a little edge. And with that edge, I'm going to guide it with my finger, with my fingernail, actually, and place it down. So we're good there, cool. And again, I'm pressing it in, okay? Make sure you try to press it in. If you see any parts that need to be fixed, let's fix them before we start. Good, cool. So now you guys, so far, you guys have seen me use three different tapes. I've used the blue tape, I've used this yellow tape, and I've used the sole tape. So you guys can see that I'm, you know, using different tapes for different circumstances. The last part here, and this is probably the most important, so I try to keep, you know, as much of the sock liner as possible to be like covered, okay? This is the best that I can usually do on this. 
you know, just uh, there's no no airbrush overspray that'll like really get in there. The reason why is because once you get any kind of paint on this white sock liner, it like absorbs it. It will not let go. So if you if you got white um, sock liners and you want to preserve them, you really want to pay attention to this next step. All right. So let's go ahead and pull out a little bit of this tape. And watch what I do with the tape. It doesn't have a lot of stretch. It's very strong, very sticky, and it doesn't stretch. But you can still make it curve. So let, let me show you guys how to make this guy curve here, okay? I like to lay it on the side here. And you can see where that line is right here, right? Y'all see the line? Of course y'all see the line. You know where the sock line is at. So I'm going to go ahead and start by putting the tape down onto that sock liner. And as I go through the curve, I'm going to just very carefully curve it myself. See, so I'm going to press it down once I feel like, oh, that looks, that's a good spot. Press it down, lock it, press it down, lock it, press it down, lock it. What I'm aiming to do is try to get the entire sock liner that's underneath definitely locked in where I can't even see it. If you can see the sock liner here at this point, that means you need to retape it because it's going to get paint on there. I'm literally getting to the point where I'm using my fingernail to put the masking tape all the way inside. Like right here, you guys can see here. Let me show you. You'll see that little section there. You can see the sock liner. So I already know. Then I'm going to have to move the sock liner. So I'm just, I'm taking my fingernail here and I'm pushing it as far to that edge as I can. And I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get that sock liner to be completely covered. If you can see the, you know, you can see stitch marks, you're coming like super, super close to possibility of that white sock liner getting paint on it. Okay. So if you see that, what I want you to do is take another extra piece of tape and try to cover that little section up. All right. So let's go ahead and again, I, I see a little bit there. So I'll grab a second piece of tape. Don't need the whole piece. I just need to cover that little sock liner part. So I'll go in and again, I'll put a, a secondary piece on there. And then I'm going to have my fingernail guide where it should go. Keeping the tape loose is the key for this section, meaning that you want it to be still able to be like manipulated. So you can see here as I'm, I manipulated the tape, I put it into a curve. Y'all see that? How's that look? Does anybody have any recommendations or suggestions on how I could have done that better? Please let me know. It's definitely the hardest part of the custom, keeping a nice, white, clean sock liner. So um, for me for me to have it to look this clean, I'm, I'm happy with that result. Now, again, you know, when you're working with your shoe and you're painting it, you really don't want to be touching or moving this section. You want to leave it alone as much as possible. All right. So um, this section looks good. Let's jump onto the other side. Okay. Again, I just told you guys, don't move it too much. So... The second side here, I'm going to try to be real careful as I lay it down. So the first piece, it's just a little small piece here. I actually prefer doing like a little small piece here just because it's almost like the intersection of the heel and this part here. And really just trying to establish a lock, nice clean lock there. And you don't need it. You don't. You don't need to have big pieces. You know, you can take two, three, four pieces to do this. It doesn't need to be a, a long piece. A long piece usually will make it a little bit more challenging, actually. So I like to just kind of take one smaller piece at a time, lay it down, overlap it with the last piece that I had. See, I have this piece. If I if I see it doesn't look that great, I'll take it off. I'll redo it. And see, this is what I mean by keeping it loose. It's not like I'm just putting it down right away. I'm trying to shape it 
So then it's kind of like the same curved shape that we got there. The closer you get, the easier it's going to be for you to lock it in. I'm not worried about any other part of the tape except for locking in this little section here. All right, dope. We got one more piece, y'all. And then we can start taping, or we can start painting. All right, y'all, this looks... I feel pretty confident in this now. It looks good to me. So the next steps is just covering the top up and we can get the paintbrush out and we can start painting. With the top section here, there's a lot going on. And uh, for me, I think, okay, well, what's the easiest way for me to tape this whole thing off? The system that I came up with now, because I've been doing this for so long, is trying to get the back heel tab first. So then I'll just put a piece of tape there. And I gotta be careful, right? Because you just did both sides here. So I'll very carefully just kind of bow it in. And then what I'll do is I'll start to go around like this. Because if you can lock in around it without really moving it around too much, it's your ideal situation here. See how close I'm getting to the edge here? I'm trying to get like, so then that way it locks in from this part all the way up. And as I do that, I'm trying to get this guy to point this way so we can eventually close the whole gap, narrow the gap up. We're almost there right now. See how the gap narrows as we get a little bit more tape on there. And we really, ideally, we want to close the whole situation at the end, okay? All right. And last piece here. There we go. Cool. This is, this is like, I would say for me, this is a, a good clean looking tape job so far. The last piece that I got to make sure you guys know that I do is one right up the top here. See this? That will make sure and ensure that I locked in everything from the ground up and all the way up to the top portion there. And what I'll do is I'll look, make sure there's no gaps. There shouldn't be any holes because when you have holes, that's when you have a possibility that you're going to get your white AF1 messed up. So if you see any holes, just grab a little tape and lock those little holes in. And that should, that should give you guys a good solid uh, start to your customs. So I know I've been talking a lot. I don't know how long this would normally take me, but... I do take my time when doing when doing this process here, because again, if you uh, mess up the white sock liner, it's pretty irreversible. I haven't really found a way to reverse that. All right. So now that we're good to go here, let's uh, let's get the paint out. Before I before I start painting though, I'm always 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 gonna double check all of my tape lines, make sure my tape lines aren't like uh, miss something or you know, did I mistape something? Did a piece of tape start, you know, kind of falling apart? These are very important things that I look at before I actually start shooting the shoe. 
All right. So let's uh, you know, let's start painting this guy. Um, I will start by I'm gonna fade this guy up today. And so since I'm fading it, I will let's see. Make sure we got enough room here. Move some of this stuff out the way. If you guys have questions, let me know. I'm I'm here to you know obviously I'm here to answer your questions because I'm teaching y'all. But I'm gonna just move the tapes, and I think we're good to go. I'm gonna grab first alpha uh, dark yellow is going to be the first color. I'm gonna use alpha flex. Is there? An, do I have an? I think I didn't have the um there was an alpha air but I don't have it unfortunately let's see maybe I'll do this let me see if I could use the Angelus I'm gonna use an Angelus yellow instead for the beginning just because I don't have the alpha air yellow to go all right so let's start with this one here So there goes some paint there. You can see when um, I poured the paint out, it's not even, that's how gloppy it is, it's super thick. See, it's not even falling out of my airbrush. That'll already tell you guys <laughs> that um, we're gonna have to use something. Again, like I told you guys earlier referencing, we need something to make this more like milky like texture than yogurt. So if you want if, if you want to say this is yogurt, then we got to make it into milk. So let's grab a little bit of too thin. All right, I put like three, four drops in there. Okay. Again, you know, somebody asked me earlier about ratios. I don't, I don't work with ratios, man. I just work with what feels right. And so here, I'm going to make sure that I'm breaking this guy down. Now, if I were to tip this airbrush over, it's definitely gonna spill out because it's more liquidy. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, lay out our first layer. Yo, before I do that, let me just get a sip of coffee. I just, wearing a hoodie today was a bad choice. <laughs> ah, all right. Fading. We're going to jump into fading next. Okay. Uh, Jovert jo jo said fading. I could always learn more. You're going to learn today, bro. You're going to learn today. Okay, so with fading, again, I didn't tape off the toe box super well just because I know I'm painting this guy black. What I do, do see here is a little speck of tape here that I need to make sure is not there if you're going to be fading. Because usually, if you're fading, then the airbrush is your best tool to fade. I'm not saying that you can't do this hand painting it, but it does take a, a certain amount of skill and control to be working with a, a brush and being able to paint different textures, okay? So um, since I'm working with the yellow here, I'm gonna start off with the yellow. And as I do it, y'all can see, hold on, before I do it actually, the first thing you wanna test it, make sure it's coming out right. All right, cool, it's coming out right. So now I'm gonna just lay down a real light coat. As I'm laying down the coat, I'm also paying attention to is it coming out nice and crisp? Is it chunky? And for me, I can see the paint is coming out, which is a great thing. And it's coming out without any kind of challenge. It's covering pretty well. For a color like yellow, you got to make sure that whatever is underneath it, which is this white base, is nice and clean. If you've got any dirt marks or spots with a color like yellow, 
it's going to show what I mean by that is any dirt marks underneath it even if uh, you're painting it this color is kind of translucent and because it's translucent you can kind of see what's underneath it okay <laughs> I just read your uh, your uh, I'm not taking my hoodie off it's 10 degrees in Chicago bro no it's not even that it's like when I'm online I just get a little nervous or you know I'm a little hot <laughs> I run a little hot when I'm I'm working on this on these shoes I mean there's been times where I could mess up and I you know I'm lucky lucky for me I haven't because we're going live and you know it's, it's a it's a real possibility you feel me Y'all see how quickly the yellow covered. Now I can see that the, the gun feels a little jammed. Because when i shooting it, nothing's coming out. Or it's coming out very slow. So just something to note. You know, this is why we want to get... We want to get this paint to be nice and milky. Nice and smooth before we put it in our airbrush. Otherwise, you're gonna run through a lot of frustration. And I tell you that because I've done it myself. One of the things that might be the issue is you didn't clean your airbrush well enough. And if your nozzle has no opening to it, then paint's not gonna come out of it <laughs> if it's blocked, right? So another thing that happens a lot of the times, and this is because I didn't strain this paint, uh, straining the paint is a good idea as well is it'll leave dry remnants of paint right here on the tip and that might be the simple cause of you just not being able to get a nice smooth spray pattern here so I'll just kind of use my nails to just peel off anything there and let's see if that helped sometimes you can even hear it like oh yeah now I can hear the paint coming out so that's how you know if it's if it's doing well, if it's not doing well, all right? So now that's about, you know, I would say that's about a layer or two in, right? It's nothing too uh, too extravagant. We haven't done anything too crazy yet. I'm letting this paint now dry. And this is great because you guys have an opportunity to see how long do I wait for the paint to dry? When do I do the next layer? You know, things of that nature. Uh, right now, I'm... Uh, I give this a couple of minutes. I could already even see, like, if I grazed my finger on it, it's already dry. And that's because when you're spraying a nice light coat, the air and the paint at the same time, it's almost like the paint's jumping on the shoe and then the air that's coming with it kind of dries it at the same time. Okay? Uh, Rainin said something real quick, guys. He said, for my people out there without an airbrush, there's a technique called the loaded brush. Look it up. Makes hand painting a fade super simple. Alan, thank you so much for uh, that info, man. I have never heard of the loaded brush. So that's something that I'm going to definitely take a look at myself, man. You know, that's awesome. Thank you for that, bro. All right, guys. So I'm going to now um, give it another coat, you know, because I want to make sure before I switch to another color that this color here is completely, I'm done with it. You know, I don't want to waste the paint. So I'll go ahead and... Hit it with another nice light coat. I can see like when I'm painting it, I could see like the wet paint that's on there. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but I do want to make sure you guys know that I can see it so you understand what's going on. What I'm doing here on this coat is just filling the yellow in a little bit stronger. I see spots that are could be filled in a little bit, you know? Have a nice strong strong presence to it. All right, so I feel like it's pretty good there. I noticed that when I shot it though, I don't know if y'all could see that or not, but y'all see that little hair? It's like a very small tiny hair there. I want to see if you guys see that or not. Okay? Happens, you know, sometimes there's a remnant or there might be something here on the on the airbrush floor that like the air kicked up and there's a piece of lint or hair that gets on there. 
don't touch it because we're spraying real light coats so when this guy dries then I can peel it off with a razor blade okay or pe or you could just peel it off or take it off some way or another but don't mess with your your fade right now right now uh, it's it's looking pretty good you know what I mean so I don't want to mess around and uh, <laughs> you know mess up the fade and it's only on the first coat there so all right so this is good I'm gonna now um, we're gonna change out the paint okay so as this guy is drying I'm just making sure that you know the paint looks good it's filled it's drying well okay so I'll jump into the next color where's the next color <laughs> I said where's the next color at? so we're gonna get into like a an acrylic paint here this is a uh, electro orange electro orange okay so I'm gonna have to use this with a little bit of flexible additive so if you guys miss that section the flexible additive is just simply uh, an additive that helps the paint stick a little bit better or a lot of bit better and so then that way we don't have to worry about cracking so somebody just mentioned that earlier and said that they are having cracking on their toe box area and so you definitely don't want to have that you know so this is kind of like glue to that let's see I have this is brand new for me so I have to actually just take it out so give me a quick sec guys There we go. Oh, it has like a white texture to it. Looks almost like too hard. Yeah, even has the same kind of like a... You guys see that? You will see how it has kind of like a... Almost like a little bit of a thicker texture to it. Nothing too crazy. But I've done the Electro Orange before through my airbrush, so we should be okay. Alan, that's, it's very similar, exactly what you just said. So Alan asks, or Raynan asks, uh, does flexible additive, is it like a bulldog adhesion promoter? Um, so there's a couple of different ways that you can use adhesion promoters. One of the ways is the bulldog is just like you spray it on first, and then you'll spray paint on top of that. Usually when you're doing that, you want to have the bulldog be still wet, and then you're spraying the paint on top of it, which kind of, the, the molecules mix together right and then they'll stick together and they're, they're gonna combine to be like one this is almost the same thing because now you're mixing this in with the paint right it's almost like uh, I don't know if you guys have used there's another one called Createx bloodline um, adhesion promoter and that one you're supposed to lay out layers of that and then you can paint on top of that or you can put it that uh, that Createx adhesion promoter inside the paint so that's what we're doing today is we're just putting a little bit of that inside, all right? Now, I don't want to have so much of the yellow, so I'm going to dump that back in. I'm cheap, so what I end up doing is I just, if I can, oh, you know what? I shouldn't, though, because this this one I actually used some too thin in there, and I don't want to mix that up. But if it was just regular paint, what I would do is I would take this regular paint, and I would dump it back in, you know, just to save it. So let me just get rid of of this and then I'm gonna add some of this right here Let's see how much we got in there oh, it's not a lot and so I'm not gonna do a, a, a thorough rinse here guys I'm gonna keep the yellow in here and then I'm gonna add this in here so it should give me a, a color kind of in between the two all right Chad, what's good, buddy? How are you, man? Welcome over to, to our live, man. I don't know if you've been on before. But uh, you said thanks for the shout-out. What what was your um, your IG name, bro? I, I shout-out a lot of people. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Where is that paint at? Okay. I think I gotta dump some more of this yellow. 
So let me dump some of this yellow out so we get the right tone. Uh, okay. And I've got a, a little bit of the flexible additive. So I'm not going to use too much, guys. I'm just going to try to add a couple of drops in there just to get, because it's thick too, you know? There we go. I just put two drops in there, just enough to have some kind of effectiveness towards and I gotta all right so I mix these guys together and I got kind of like a like a light neon orange almost all right so this is where we're at here so you guys can see that the yellow and the uh, this orange is a little bit different you know what I mean so before I start this, again, I didn't clean the airbrush out. And that's kind of, it's kind of a good thing when you're kind of fading, right? Because now when I, I hit this guy with the next color, it'll kind of transition in itself. Let me see if I can get a, a little tray for you guys so you could see it a little bit easier. Here we go. Now you just gotta be careful because the other side's still painted, okay? So immediately I'm not jumping onto the front section. I'm trying to stay away from it and I'm trying to now build the second section up okay and from there once we kind of got an orange established and the yellow established then we can start doing the fading process that's the way i like to do it i know people have different ways to do it but first thing i want to do is make sure that i got some kind of orange over here Okay, so I'm going to kind of stop in this section because I'm going to fade a different color right after that, okay? So we got that done. And you can see the airbrush is taking well to the paint, which is good. It's flowing out fine. So again, I'm going to just kind of stop like right where this panel ends. So then that'll be a good indication for me to switch to the next color, okay? Making sure I get the edge too, because a lot of times we neglect the edges. I don't know how well you guys could see that right now, but now we're at a yellow and we're at like almost like a, I don't know what, what kind of an orange you guys want to describe this at, but it's almost like a sunset orange. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this the opportunity to dry a little bit because I think uh, we've, we've laid down enough. A lot of times you can see like, like here in this section here, it's very shiny. So um, that's kind of like my, okay, you, 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 you put enough paint down, let that section dry because you don't want to overdo it, okay? 
So this section here, right, right where the swoosh is at, I could see a little bit of shine. I know that that's probably just enough where we need to give it some time to breathe. All right, so let's go ahead and let that breathe a little bit. And as that's breathing, now we're gonna blend the two in, okay? What I wanna caution to you guys is that this is a yellow, it's lighter than the orange, all right? So as we're doing the fade, you never wanna get too close to the yellow. What I like to do is I like to hit the airbrush from here and just keep whisking it this way. So I'll be whipping the airbrush that way where it just kind of gets a little bit of that flavor of the orange, but not like where it's getting on the toe box or anything like that. I don't want it to touch this main toe box area. I just want it to blend in nicely. Does that make sense, guys? Chad, um, which um, which yellow are you working with usually, bro? Chad just said your, your yellow covers so much better than when I work with it. I, I'm, You know what? And I, and I agree with you, it's coming out really nice. Sometimes I have issues with the yellow too, you know? There's a little piece of hair that I told you guys about here. It should be dry now. It should be able to just kind of rub it off. There we go, it's gone. Okay. Oh, you work with Angela's? Is it just a regular yellow? Or I think this one was Tour Yellow when I was working with it, but I, I don't, as you can see, I don't remember. Either Tour Yellow or Do the Right Thing Yellow, one or the other. But um, anyways, let's go ahead and do the blending process here. It actually looks pretty good right now um, from my eyes. I don't know if you guys could see it, you know. Oh, <laughs> Chad, what's good, bro? I, I, I now, now I see why you said uh, thanks for the shout out. I, I literally just shouted you out before I jumped on, man. Well, we got, I got more shout outs for you soon, bro. You know that. So th thanks for joining me too, man. I appreciate you. And dude, um, by the way, guys, uh, if you're on right now, let's see, where did they go? I might as well tell you guys here, since uh, everyone's like, what are you guys talking about, man? Sneakerhead engineer, guys. The sneakerhead engineer, Chad, just hooked me up with these insoles, man, and they look fantastic, dude. Like, these are perfect for the Chicago ones that I just made, the patent leather ones that I made. Uh, really, really comfortable. I don't want to press on them because I'm afraid I'm going to get yellow on them. But yeah, man, these look great, dude. I really, really, really appreciate you, man. These look awesome, dude. So if you guys have not checked out the Sneakerhead Engineer, man, he's he's done some incredible work with these. He also does back tabs and stuff. Ah, man, I really don't want to show you guys this yet, but I'll show you guys a, a sneak peek if you guys are on. Check this out. I've been looking for somebody who was doing a great job on back tabs and stuff, but this is, uh, let me move this. This is some more of his work here. You guys could see I'm working on the back of a, a Jordan 4 and we're making a Gucci tab. And man, he did, dude, this looks, if you guys could see it in person, looks amazing, dude, in 3D. He does uh, Jordan 4 back tabs, Jordan 12 uh, tab replacements. He's got all kinds of stuff. So if you guys get a chance, please check him out. And again, thank you, man, Chad. I appreciate you, buddy. All right, guys, let me jump into the... Uh, I think it's time now, so I'm going to go ahead and now blend. Again, I'm going to whip it towards the yellow, but control controlled, okay? So when I'm pressing down on the trigger, guys, I'm pressing down on it here. I'm whipping it, and as I whip it at the end, I let go of it. So then that way I'm not getting too much of the orange to go that way, all right? All right, same thing on this side. Trying to work on the little crevices as well. I don't want to keep them white. I want to get make sure the panel is saturated with the right paint. There we go. Might be a little difficult for you guys to see, but that's a... Uh, it's starting to blend, you know what I mean? And so then that's, I, I like the way it's looking right now. I might just do a little bit more here on the. The sides here, and I'm gonna move on to the next color. So that looks good. 
Let me move on to one more color here. Um, the color I'll choose next. Actually, you know what? I was going to do an electro orange anyway. So uh, since I'm going to do an electro orange and I've got this in here already, let me mix both of them together. So we'll kind of get that again. You know, I'm not I'm not uh, rinsing out this cup. A lot of times when you're changing colors out, you rinse out the cup, you get it nice and clean, and then you move on to the next color. Here we're doing a fade, so I want to try to get the transitions to look nice and smooth. So I'm going to keep what's in the cup, and we're just going to add the electro orange. Okay? So let me grab that real quick. Where did it go? Alright y'all, Electro Orange, uh, I gotta mix it now. Electro Orange in that like kind of yellowish orange there. And we're gonna mix the two together and so we should get something in between the two colors. Again, if you wanted to have more of a harsher fade, meaning like it transitions more drastically, you can always clean the cup out and then just go with just Electro Orange. You just got to be real careful with how you blend them. But now you guys can see as I put the two together, we've got this color here. It's like an in-between of the last two colors, okay? So let's go ahead and put this guy to the side. I'm going to start now painting it this color. Before I do that though, I know that there's still that first color, the last color is still kind of like lodged in the the front of this cup here so let's go ahead and get that out so I'll just go ahead and spray it out until I see a color that I like alright so see here it's still looking like this yellow starting to darken starting to darken and now we're at a completely darker color alright so let's get into now fading this next section same thing guys I'm gonna just be Going to the next section that I want to do it, it's going to be about like right here. I'm going to be painting the swooshes in black guys, so again, if you want a shortcut, you don't have to mask off the swoosh if you're going to paint it black anyways. All right, so we've gotten a little bit of orange on that side. Let's do the same with this side. And I'm gonna end it like right here where the top of the swoosh is. Go underneath the swoosh. Okay, and now I'm seeing that the, the blend is starting to, you can see the difference between the two, so we're still going to have to blend it in. So I'm going to end the orange about right here because I'm going to do another color going right there, okay? Alright guys, you see the uh, difference, right? You can see yellow, 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 orange, and now we've got like a, almost like a fire orange right here, electro orange here, okay? So what I'm doing now is I'm going to blend in the electro orange and the, the last orange we had. Same exact thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to just whip towards that last color. until you see a nice blend, a nice transition.
Okay. So now um, this orange here looks a, like a little too strong for me. If you ever need to dial back, this is the time to dial back, okay? So what I will do is I'm going to let this go ahead and dry. As it's drying, guys, I'm going to just add the, the last color that I did, which was, um, where was it? It was just the regular orange, right? Um, what can I do? Oh, they got, they've got that dark yellow. I'll add some dark yellow into it. See, so I can still add a color into it, and I can lighten it up a little bit. So again, I'm trying to lighten it up just slightly, just so the uh, fade isn't so strong. Again, this is just a matter of preference. All right. I'm trying not to get this on my hoodie because I just got the hoodie, but knowing me, I'm going to get it on my hoodie somewhere. All right. Trying to spit a little bit of the uh, paint out so I can get to the lighter orange. Usually if you're doing like a darker color you don't want to keep going on the darker color if you think it's too dark. All right, that's a decent blend. That's a decent blend. So hard for me to show you guys because of the, I don't know what happened with the lighting today on my camera, man. I. I know that we were worrying about uh, trying to get it to be not too bright because what happens a lot of the times is if it's too white, then you guys can't see exactly what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and let that rest a little bit. As that is uh, doing its thing, I'm going to go ahead and dump my airbrush and I'll jump onto, you know, for for today, let's see, where, where are we at? Oh, almost two hours in. So what I'll do is I, I'm going to now start protecting this back sock liner because I know that we're getting close to it. So I'm going to make sure that whatever we do here is very careful around that sock liner. So I'm going to press in and lock it in before we even start. Make sure that we get that sock liner to be crispy white at the end. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, so let me go ahead and dump what's in the brush, right? That's what it looks like so far, guys. And now we're gonna work on the next section, which is gonna be right here. So taking out everything from the brush, the oranges or whatever, before I do that, you know, just never hurts to just make sure you're looking at the whole you know, concept of what you're doing and make sure that you don't need to use this paint again because I don't want to mix it a second time. Looks good to me, so I'm going to go ahead and dump it out. I'm not going to fully dump it out. I'm just going to dump it enough where when I put in my next color, which is going to be uh, Electro Red. It's like a hot pink almost. So you know what? I might change that. Let me see what else I got. Oh, I got this one. Sorry. I messed up, guys. I think I'm going to do this electro pink instead. Okay? So electro pink, and then I'll end it with the electro red. All right. Again, I'm not flushing out the entire thing, guys. I'm just... Trying to get the majority of the paint out.
All right, so next is Electro Pink. And uh, as I mix it, y'all should see a different color. Should be like a combination of pink and orange almost. Let's try it out. If you ever have doubts on what the color is going to look like, spray it on a napkin. It's just easier. All right, so you'll see this orange. Let's try to get it to be like more of a pink. Now you can see it's more of a pink color here, right? Y'all see that? So we're gonna jump into pink now. Before I do that, I see, see this right here? Seems to be coming apart a little bit. And so, just to be safe, let me grab like a piece of tape just to lock it. There we go. That is just to make sure that we don't get some overspray in there. Still shows a lot of orange, so let me just try to take a little bit more of the orange out by spraying it. And I could feel the gun is starting to jam a little bit, so again I'm going to clean off the front because that's the easiest fix. Might just be, it's being blocked by dried paint, so let's see if that worked out. I think I gotta dump it out, guys. This is just too much orange there, so I'm gonna just dump a little bit of it out and we'll put some more of this pink in there. Sorry, guys. Definitely didn't mean to do that, but it happens. So let's see if uh, that helped any. Still looks very orange, right? Okay. So when this happens, if it seems like that the uh, the blend doesn't look so great, what I'll do is I'll just this is I'm taking some acetone here, guys. And what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of acetone in there. What the acetone will do is it's going to break up and clean out. A good majority of the brush and sometimes I need that because just too many colors been mixed together you know let's go ahead and clean so this is my first time doing an actual flush with all the colors I just dumped out the majority of it there All right, so I got a good portion of that out. Um, since we're here, we might as well just check the, the, the front end of the airbrush, okay? What I mean by that is sometimes, because I didn't strain the paint, some people strain paint, some people don't. Straining the paint just means that all the particles and stuff that 
might be all dried and clumpy and stuff. Might be stuck inside of this little nozzle piece, okay? So let's rinse, rinse that nozzle piece out as well since we got that opportunity to do it now. And so what I'll do is I'll just, I'll drop it in a little cup. I had a little acetone. And we're just gonna clean that front nozzle out real quick. The acetone just kinda weakens any paint that's in there. I'll let it sit in there for a sec. And now I'll fish it out, see? Fished it out. And let's just clean and see if there's any junk that's in here. You can see a lot of orange in there, that's for sure. So we were gonna be spraying a lot of orange if we had continued. All right, so I'll take this little piece again. We'll just dip it in there, rinsing it, cleaning the inside. And this is how we're gonna do a quick check to see has your brush been cleaned all the way. All right, cool. So I feel like that's pretty good. What I like to do is with one eye I squint and I try to see if I can see a little hole through here. Can I see through there or not? And right now I don't. And so that means this is still blocked with paint. If it's blocked with paint, I'll take a little needle and I'll start to push out any paint that might be still stuck in there. See that paint? See that paint that was stuck in there? So there's paint stuck in here. And that's why I wasn't performing. Now I got that little piece out. I'll look through it again. And now I could see through there. I can, And the, the reason I can tell is because when I see through it, I could see a little white hole and that's this white tissue paper that's in the background there. So now I can go ahead and put it back. So I'll go ahead and put it back. It's probably not the easiest way to handle the brush, but you know, I'll put it back here. It's locked in nice. Put the nozzle cap back on very gently. And now we should be able to now we should be able to spray with this thing again. Let's check it. Put a little acetone to check. See? So it's spraying. Cool. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and put that pink paint back in there. Let me just go ahead and clean this out. Hear that? It's all, all gone now. Okay, cool. So let me grab the paint and we're gonna do it. We're gonna redo this section here. There we go. All right, y'all, take two. <laughs> Happens, right? Now let's see how this looks before we even start spraying it on the shoe. Much more pink, see that? And that's what we suspected, right? Because now we've pretty much cleaned the brush out. So I'm gonna go behind this swoosh here. Start to spray in a little bit of that pink. And as I do that, I'm gonna to start to blend in the orange and the pink together, but I gotta make sure my sock liner is nice and covered, okay? This is an important part that I want you guys to take note of. So if you guys are here right now, you can take a quick second. I know you guys are working on different projects, but watch how I shoot the airbrush. I'm not gonna be shooting the airbrush at the sock liner. I'm not gonna be shooting it towards the sock liner, I'm gonna be shooting it away from the sock liner like this, okay? It's all about angles. So if I shoot it this way, the, the paint's gonna be going that way, right? So it won't be sucking into the actual sock liner. As I do that though, I'm not gonna be spraying 
really fast. It's going to be real light. So just real light, soft. Almost like it's just starting to sprinkle or just starting to snow. That's how light you want it. And now we're going to blend the two in. So I'm going to blend in that orange and I'm going to blend in the pink. Should give me almost like a reddish color. Again, looking at the sock liner area here, just real soft. And we're going to do the same with this side here, okay? Sort of like right in this little section here. Before I continue, I'm going to just check sock liner locked in. This little, little section here, I could see a little pop, so I'm trying to press it nice and clean. There we go. Watch the angle again, guys. I'm going to try to spray it where I'm not hitting directly at the sock liner. Real soft. On this, I could see there's a little bit of dried paint on the tip. It's not allowing a nice smooth flow. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take off that little, little bit of paint, you know? It happens, it's just dry paint. Okay, so this paint's out. <laughs> I heard it. I heard it's out. So, so far, guys, I'm at a yellow to like a medium highlighter orange to an electro orange to an electro pink. And then I'll be ending with another color at the end. But um, I think we've got a good um, understanding on how to tape today. Uh, you guys could see that I now I've just got to let the colors kind of dry and settle and before I continue to do what I'm going to be doing on this because after the the fade job is done I'm still going to be continuing with the custom so unfortunately I can't untape and peel everything off for you guys today but I think this is a good good starting uh, point for you guys to learn how to tape the Air Force One off I think that we went over some good strategies and techniques today on how to fade the shoe as well um, as this is drying, I just wanted to uh, double check and see if any of you guys had any questions. I think that this might be a good point to uh, end the session because we're about two hours in now. I'm sure you guys are tired. <laughs> I know I'm tired. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, I do feel that the, uh, the airbrush is kind of like choppy, so I'm going to clean it out a little bit. 
If you guys have any questions, please let me know. It's 8.04 right now, guys. I'm planning on probably taking off in about six minutes. So that gives you guys some time to formulate some thoughts. And if you have any questions, let me know, okay? hopefully we can keep going with this I think this one is not as um, easy to use because it's an acrylic uh, let's see what is it? yeah it says alpha acrylic it's still spraying though it's just it's a little bit thicker it's on the thicker end and I'm not sure how to exactly break it to uh, be a little bit thinner since they don't have like a too thin or anything So again, when I'm going to spray the sock liner, I always do this. It's just become a, a habit for me because I'm such a stickler with having a nice finished product at the end. I'll notice how far away I'm shooting the the pink from the sock liner. I do that so I don't immerse the sock liner with any kind of paint that I don't need to. Yeah, this was doing a fade live. <laughs> Didn't expect to do a whole fade live, but it's okay. It's all good. It's, uh, it was part of the workflow, you know what I mean? All right, cool. Always test, make sure that it's still working out okay. There we go, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to give a real light coat on the top there just to make sure I fill in that area by the sock liner but not too heavy. I want to make sure that there's some kind of color. But the angle is what I want to show you guys that really matters. So your airbrush, you want to shoot it at an angle where you're avoiding getting too much paint in that section. Whew, man. So this is where we're at now, guys. You can clearly see uh, the transition now from one color to the other color. I don't know how, how great it is for you guys on your guys' camera there, but um, what I am going to be doing is I'm still going to be painting this swoosh in black. So that'll give a little bit of dimension. It's going to really make the, the fade pop out more. If you guys have fades and then you add black to them uh, for whatever reason black the contrast with black and neons uh, to me looks incredible and it just kind of really helps the the fade and neon stand out as well so yep uh, Lalo what's good bro how you doing man you were silent the whole time <laughs> um, you know that's a good question man I, I don't know whether um, the Angelus too thin would work uh, with with the, these paints so I, I you know I'm just kind of 
before I do something like that and then mess up somebody's shoe, um, the last thing I want to do is do that. I'd rather probably contact the company and see what they recommend because uh, I could tell the acrylics are a little bit on the thicker end than uh, your Alpha Air, you know, standard paints and stuff. You know what I mean? So, um, Raynan said, I'm sure you've seen my Blue Marble Patina Customs. Which do you think looks better? My Black Toe? Uh, my black toes marbled or my lat I think your latest pair Alan because of the fact that I feel like you're uh, now getting the 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 hang of how to marbleize uh, if you guys haven't seen Alan's page um, rain and once you shout yourself out man uh, throw your Instagram out there uh, so that people could see it you know what I mean um, oh okay and then you marbled the pair for customs by Kev it's funny I was just talking to customs by Kev as well um, yeah I noticed that you guys are doing a collab which I'm, I'm really happy to see that man I feel like I'm not going to take all the credit, but I think y'all met over here, you know, live and shit. So um, that's great to see that, man. I'm, I'm glad to see customizers coming together to, to collab and do stuff. But I do think that, uh, like we talked about before, we mentioned an artist that, you know, I kind of threw that artist's name out there and I showed you her work mar marbleizing. And I think it, you know, you just have to develop after years of style or months of style and you're going to get there. You're 100% you're going to get there. You know what I mean? Phase one, what's good, homie? Phase one over on YouTube as well. Uh, you guys are so quiet, man. Y'all viewing, but ne never say what's up, man. So I'm, I'm happy to say what's up to you, phase one. How you been? How's everything going? So it's 8-11, guys. Um, I think I'm going to call a quiz because I got to eat dinner, man. It's 8-11 over here. Um, do you guys have any questions? I'll give you guys a couple of a minutes. I, I see a lot of people are still on, especially on YouTube. A couple of people still on Twitch as well. Um, for for some reason, I don't know why the Facebook one never updates, even though when people are on Facebook, it doesn't show viewers or whatever, you know what I mean? So, yeah. There we go. At the Die Lab 773. Check out his Marbleized Jordan 1s he just did. Um, I'll follow my fellow creatives back, which I, I'll vouch for you guys he does. And I know that a lot of you guys have met here, and I'm so happy to see, like, you know, we just got this little custom community going on, man. So, uh, shout out to all you guys that are here watching you know, what are you working on phase one? Everybody's working on a shoe and still watching me. That's incredible. Can't believe it. Can you guys see the fade here? Are you guys okay to see? A, do you see a transition there? I know one of the other homies, what was his name? Uh, I don't want to mispronounce his name here. Juvert. Juvert, you still there, homie? Here's your here's your fading tutorial that that uh, didn't expect to give you today. Legacy colorway, what's good, Roger? How you living, man? More Patreon family in the building, brother. Gorillas AF1, oh sick. Gorillas the the musical group Gorillas. Everybody's working on AF1s nowadays, huh? I love the Gorillas, man. They're dope. Roger, how you doing, man? Another uh, Patreon member. Legacy Colorway Customs, man. You guys got to check out Legacy Colorway's work, man. Uh, the homie Legacy just started another Instagram channel as well. Uh, it is at, is it The Shoe Cutters or is it Shoe Cutters Legacy? Please uh, chime in when you get a chance. Oh, nice. Phase 1, you are doing a Gorilla's AF1. Sick, bro. When you get a chance, man, please tag me whenever you're done with that. I would love to see the finished work on that. I loved the Gorillas, actually. They were a dope uh, group in general. Kind of, kind of underground though, huh? Dude, I'm glad to be back too, man. I, we were, um, I, I don't know if this is a little too elementary for you, legacy, because I know that you're, 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 you're complex with your work now, but uh, teaching people how to do the right thing when it comes to taping off Air Force Ones, teaching them how my technique is, how to keep a nice clean white sock liner in the process, and then teaching how to do a fade today as well. There we go. Shoe cutters with a Z. Hey, we got somebody from Puerto Rico. Nice, man. Frio Barbershop. What's good? How you living, Frio? My peeps from Puerto Rico in, in the building today, huh? <laughs> That's awesome, man. We got we got uh, Legacy is from uh, Down Under as well. Uh, we've got other people uh, from England sometimes joining. We've got people from South Africa that I've seen here. So I appreciate y'all, man. I really do. 
Uh, let me uh, throw up the links for all the stuff that I've uh, worked with today. If you guys need anything, uh, all of the links should be up on this little guy here that I'm going to send you guys right now. If you guys learned something today as well, man, I really appreciate any small donations that you guys can give. Um, it says, like my work and want to support. All, don all donations are greatly appreciated. Streamlabs.com slash feelgoodthreads. Uh, if you guys want to get the paint, it's from Alpha 6 Corporation. The link is there as well. You can use my code, which is feelgood. Today, we didn't use uh, any brushes, but I do use Princeton brushes. My guys at Princeton, they, these guys are awesome. Um, there is a link for Princeton brushes as well as detailed Princeton brushes, which I use quite a bit. The airbrush that I used today was an Iwata HPCS. In case you're wondering, there is a link there as well that I just put for you guys, along with the compressor. We did not use liquid kicks today, but uh, the sealer that I do uh, finish off with is LK Shoes Liquid Kicks Matte Finisher. So shout out to Liquid Kicks. Uh, great scratch resistant sealer. And you guys could use my uh, discount code for that as well. It's just, again, just the word feel good should get you guys, I think, 15% off, 10% off. It's been a minute. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, yeah, any other questions, guys? It's 8.16 now. I know I said I was going to be done at 8.10, but I was, I was run late because I jabber too much. Give you all a minute before I uh, duck out of here. Here's the finished product as you guys are thinking of any of your last second questions here. I don't know how good or bad that looks on your guys' camera here, but it looks pretty pretty good, pretty uh, transitioned well over here. Looking good over here. I could still here and there use a little bit touching up. There we go. And obviously I got one last color here to do at the end, but oh, I'm tired, man. I'm tired. Thank you, phase one. I appreciate it, big homie. All right, guys. I think we're, we're set for today. Um, so my plans, guys, um, we're still trying to finish up this last Patreon video. It's for the Wu-Tang Customs that um, we created quite some time ago. Um, Alex, who's my uh, camera person and editor, is working on it. He's just finishing up the music on it. Um, it's taking him a little bit longer than usual just because he has a second job. It's a full-time job that he does. And uh, apparently they're a little short-staffed. So uh, everybody who's on the Patreon family, thank you guys again. Uh, much love for all of the support and just, just being there in general. Uh, keeping me uh, 100 on, on doing the customs and teaching you guys Whatever I can teach you guys to be better artists. I uh, love you guys. I think that we are good to go with... Um, I don't see any more... Um, I don't see any more questions. Phase 1 asked the best question in the world. He said, where do you get your laces from? <laughs> Shopfeelgood.com. Please, if you guys need laces, uh, we got a bunch of different laces that just came in. Let me show you real quick what we do have since Phase 1 just mentioned that. So just to add it to the shop, uh, I know a lot of you guys are in these uh, new thicker Air Force One style laces. Um, these are also used for like the Travis Scott's, the Dunks. A lot of people are using these. So we have these at the shop now. We've got them in a mineral blue. I've got them in a, like an off white, like a sail color as well, which is the most popular color that we have right now. I've got black coming in as well. I've got uh, white coming in as well, and I've got a chocolate coming in as well. So a lot of people are using these laces, so I wanted to make sure that you guys are um, you guys are hooked up. You know what I mean? Now, if you guys need um, laces for your off-white dunks, we've got laces for off-white dunks now as well. Um, these guys have the rubber tips, which a lot of people don't um, have yet. And they obviously have the shoelaces as well. So just uh, letting you guys know if you guys need any laces for off-white dunks. Man, we've got like I mean, 20, 22 or 23 different colors now in stock, okay? Uh, if you guys are looking for 
off-white laces, flat laces. You know, we've got oatmeal. We got um, man, we got so many colors in these now, guys. About ten or fifteen colors. Sal, thank you so much for liking the stream, homie. Um, got a bunch of different colors in that. Um, you guys need Travis Scott laces. We got Travis Scott laces. Uh, what else do we got, man? We got so many different things. Union laces. Um, I encourage you guys to check the shop out, man. Shopfeelgood.com. Uh, again, I uh, really appreciate everybody who's been supporting. Uh, obviously, this is what I do for a living. So, you know, when you guys go to shopfeelgood.com and buy some laces, uh, you're supporting myself and my family, you know, and, and you keep the streams going as well. So, um, you know, thank you guys again, man. Phase One said checking the shop out now. Thank you, Phase. Appreciate you. Uh, my homie Raynan said, and the laces are definitely high quality. I, I know you know, Raynan, because you've been buying a lot. So thank you again for that, man. And um, Phase 1 asked you, Raynan, what is your Instagram handle? I think you had said it earlier. The Die Lab 77. Oh, there you go. The Die Lab 773. Cool. All right, guys. I'm out of here. I really appreciate you guys for you know tuning in. I know this was kind of a long session, but I think it was overdue. And I expect to be back again next week. And we'll, we'll do something fun uh, and different for next week. Uh, Patreon family, look out for the Wu-Tang Dunks, um, the Art of Detail video coming out this week as well. And uh, it's a wrap, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. My name is Suhil with Feel Good Threads, and I'm out of here. Peace.